to this is Dr. Dare to be creative and I am here doing the intro to this video because apparently part of it is messed up so I'm just redoing the intro and this is to um, me doing a boys laminated um, envelope book so the book is already gone um, so I'm doing the intro because that part when I downloaded it was corrupted so anyway stay tuned for the rest of it so you missed I guess the envelope but I do have another um, video up to show you how to make it just in case you need to so I'll have that linked at the end of the video as well all right so um, the, the video finishes but it just doesn't have the intro so I am back with the last one and I am going to show you how to make one and I'll show just in the other videos and the main thing is because this has words on it I want it to stay in this direction I could have wanted to fold this way but I'm not so when you think about your paper and you have something that you have to have be considerate of the design then if it has words on it and things like that then you want to always score it at the four and the nine if the pattern didn't matter then you can score it um, any which way you want the one inch um, score marks are for the height of the project the four and the nine score marks are for the width of the project and so here I'm going to capture the width so I'm going to score 4 and I'm going to score at 9 because I want my words to be in that width going horizontal. Then I'm going to rotate it because I'm going to make my height 10 inches. So I'm going to take my inch off here at 1 and my inch off at 11. That leaves me with a height of 10. So you can see the score marks. So again, 1 inch off the top, 1 inch off the bottom, 4 and 9 or four inches and three inches. So I'm now gonna just pour it on real quick. And this paper is really, really thin. So it doesn't score as well. And I'm trying, I didn't want to score it too hard either because it can rip. And because it can rip, I decided, you know, this is some fan sign. I am going to laminate. So I did laminate his. And I will show you what I did in just a second. So once you have everything scored just like that, move my laptop out the way, grab these scissors. You're going to keep the center sections and get rid of the four end flaps. So I'm going to come in angled because I'm miter in my corners here because we want to keep these down just like that. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to cut off to the left of the score line. Over here, I'm going to cut to the right of the score line. Come to the middle. Might I make those two points meet? Should fall off right there. Boom. Angle on the inside of that score line. Cut to the left of the score line. So that piece will fall off. Oops, and one more. This is going to be to the right of the score line. It is hot in here because I have this laminator on. Oh, it's already hot. Alright. So, that's what you should end up with. Fold your flaps back in. Minimal waste of paper. okay yeah okay so what I'm going to do is take my ATG you can use black glue this is really thin paper and just boom. so I do have a laminator and I am going to laminate this it's a great one of my laminator sheets I do, I'm going to grab just a little piece of paper and stick it right here. This will allow my grandson to use a marker once it's laminated and he can write on it. So with this I am going to, uh, let's see, I thought I had a piece over here cut out. Oh yes, I do, I do, I do. And I just moved it in uh, when I moved everything around. Okay. 
my desk is a mess because I'm trying to hurry up and make these before they leave. Here it is. I just stick it to my ink. So I'm just going to stick this right up here. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to stick it in. Okay. So that's going to be the front. That's going to be the uh, writable flap. Now, I already made too, too many of these. I'll show you something. I'm going to cut this back on. Um, about the lamination. This is the warm-up brand. I should have probably tried it out with my Biscott. I had never used this before. I was trying my new tool. Felt good. You know what I was doing. To use something I hadn't used. So you're going to stick that in there. You have to stick it all the way to the end. Make sure this is clean. And I'm going to stick this through the machine. I'm leaving my pocket open now. I did do some with it initially when I was testing. I redid like three of these pockets over. I did it with the pocket sealed and I'll show you that in just a second while this is being run through my machine. I have the scotch laminator. I got it from Walmart. Like 20 bucks. And uh, it's already hot so I'm going to run this through. Sorry you can't see it. But if you've seen the laminator, you know what it looks like. And I just regret my mistake so I can show you what I did. So the first one was this one that I ran through. And I I had to unseal the pocket, which I, I already anticipated that. But I ended up ripping up some of this pocket, which is, I mean, I can still use it, you know. But I don't want to do that. So thank God the paper pad came with three of the same sheets. <laughs> So and this was the second one. I left this one open and I put in here an insert inside of there because you can do that too so that because this paper is really really thin. Um, because it's so thin I was worried about it sealing like that one and having to rip it through. I put the piece of paper in there so I can cut it and it, it worked fine but then when I went to cut the green piece out this part cut right here perfect. When I went to cut the green out I cut right through the paper. So I did that one over. And this one, it didn't have anything in it, but for some reason it just buckled and it made a crease down the middle. I don't know if you can see that big crease down the middle. And so I was having trouble with it actually really healing the sides well enough. So I did these three over. So actually I have um, quite a few of them. Let me cut the machine off so it came out. So, give a second to cool off, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Again, I have junk everywhere, so I'm making two books. Um, so, here is the pages that I've made so far for my grandson. And again, they have the flap on the back. I'm going to use Velcro to keep them closed. Um, so I haven't, we haven't designated all of them yet. I ended up, this is 13, but this one just to stand up from the crowd, say hello to my pearly whites. I told him this can be like his chores, his hygiene stuff to make sure he remember to brush his teeth, you know, since they're not in school, all that kind of stuff. I just did it because of the, the shark, the pearly whites, rough and tough, you know, he's played soccer before, um, extremely handsome because he is, <laughs> yes, I'm bragging. That's my baby. I uh, play all day. Because he does like those games. Adventurer. My way. He's played baseball. Sports life has not played football. Roar. Dinosaur. You rock. Hopefully I'm in frame. Discover and explore. He's played basketball before. And live on the edge. So that's just, you know, the look collection. And then I'm just going to spiral bound it. But I just want to kind of show you, and I'm going to show you how I punched and how I use my cinch um, as well. So this, these are 12, this makes number 13. So with this, what I'm going to do is just take my pair of scissors, again, excuse the mess, but they're leaving and I need to make this real quick so I don't have time to clean up in between. I will clean up, because it's a lot of little pieces from this, uh, when you hole punch with your, um, Cinch. Oh my gosh, all this extra. I will clean this up. 
later. But for the sake of the video, I just wanted to get it done so you can kind of see. So you have to cut along the edge and make sure you leave the seal line intact. And when you have it, it's hard to see on camera, but you can tell the difference between like where it, it melted and where it didn't melt. So cut just to the right of that. Now, some of these edges are a little sharp too, so you may want to use your corner rounder. Now, you have to have an X-Acto knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around this shape, and that will open the pocket up. And again, you don't want to go really hard. You just want to just go across it. And believe it or not, it will open it up. And so far, it has not cut through to the other sheet of paper. And actually, I'm kind of using my regular pressure. And I'm not pressing that really, really hard, but I'm pressing, you know, regular enough. So, boom. And there we go. It's open. And then I'm just going to fold it back on that score line that I already had, which helped a lot by having that. So that's why I like to pre-score it ahead of time. Now, so that's how that turned out. Cute. Again, not quite sure what she's going to do with all these. My daughter will come up with something creative that I know. I'm going to show you how to use the cinch. Because that was a question. Um, so with the cinch, the key thing is you have to know how long your project is. My project is 10 inches in length. You can't use more than 20 pieces of paper in the cinch at one time. But i um, not using paper right now at the moment, so I'm just going to stick this in. My, this piece is pushed all the way in. And you see this is removable. And you see these pegs. Boom. All the pegs. I like to do this. I pushed in. So my first cut. Now, and you can actually, it's probably better to cut it ahead of time, but I wasn't sure because of the trim around the edge it was going to be the same, but I think I figured out how to do that. Um, so I am going to press down. And mine is the square punch set. So I have my holes. Boom. And as you can see, it has a little plastic in there. That's what I'm talking about all of my desk that I have to pull out. Alright, so as you can see, it only punched out half of that paper. So then what you do is you pull out that as far as it can go. Look at the number. Mine is 10 inches, so it says I need to pull out number peg 8. I don't know if you can see that. So, peg, the number's right here, 1 through 12. Here's peg number 8. Right here, so I just pull it, tug on it. It doesn't actually come out. Then you're going to take this. On the side of your cinch, there is this notch. This holds your paper in place. It goes up and down. So I am going to take this and I'm going to attach it. And for me, for this one, it's going to go right into the hole right before the last hole that it's made. That's securely in there. It's pushed all the way against. And I am going to boom. Push that lever on the side, pull it out, and I have all of my holes punched. There we go. Simple, very simple, and the effect of making a book is really cool. Now, two things that you can use. Stop some little pieces in there. Anyway, close that back up. Put that handle down. So with that, now you have two ways to make your handle. I am going to, for the sake of time, use, and it's a boy. I'm going to use these the rubber ones this is actually an inch um this is the easier one you just thread it through the other one is easy too but what you would do is you have these right here and you hook it up here the wires lay your pages on top come over here with the wires and this that you set it to the size and then you just squeeze it down and when you squeeze it it just crimps or cinches the wire closed. Uh, for this one, I'm not doing that though. Because, like I said, I'm trying to hurry and sorry about that noise, y'all. This every time just comes out because of that. So, what I'm going to do, boom. Um, 
I'm just checking to see if this is kind of the order I like it in. Hmm, that works for me. Oops, I forgot. I kind of hit the cover. Duh. I can't do that yet. Sorry. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. So we have the pages. Right here, all cut out, all laminated to make them very doable. Now I am going to make the cover. So for my cover, I am going to use chipboard that I got. I, I keep these, the, this is what I've been using for about, I guess, seven, eight years, if not longer. Oh, when I first, maybe, yes, yeah, it's been 10 years, 13 years since I got a scrapbook, and this has been the first thing. So yeah, 13 years. They always come with these. Perfect chap scrap wood, honey. You don't have to pay for it. Although I do have um, chip wood paper. Since I'm not going to add any tabs to the side, I am going to cut this out. And I'm looking for my other set of chip wood that I had last night. Oh, here it is. Okay. One of the things that you want to do is never use your regular blade. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my old blade. What I do is when my blade started getting dull, like this one, I mark it and put black ink on it. That lets me know this is a cut chipboard, laminate, um, you know, kind of rough kind of stuff. I of my fresh brace. So I'm going to remove my blade and put this one up here. This is already dull and it actually cuts better. So I am going to cut. Um, this one is going to be 10 by 6, probably 10 by 5 and a half, let's see. So with this laminate, it made it a little bit over 10. Yep, so I'm going to make it, actually it's like 10 and a quarter. So I'm going to probably make it 10 and a half. Let me see if it looks any taller than that. So I'm going to make it, I want it 11, I think I'm going to make it 11 inches. So I could do that too. I think I'm going to do 10 and a half. This is, yeah. I'm going to do ten and a half. So I'm going to put this in. This is what five. Let me get my ten and a half first. Whoops. Line it up. And sometimes you have to cut it twice. Yep. Okay, cut it. Okay, it once. So that's ten and a half. And then I'm going to make this by. See if it added any volume to this. Um, I'm still gonna make it. I'll make it still make it five and a half. I think we'll be okay with that. All right, so that is my cover, and now I'm going to duplicate that. Don't get rid of these because you never know what you can use this for: tags, different things like that. So ten and a half. chipboard and what I'm going to do is put my paper pad again. This paper is really really thin. If I had time I'd actually would modge podge it because huh, but um, I don't have time. So I am just going to grab some paper and try to think of one I didn't use. Well I'm going to use this blue since the blue got ripped up. Use that. And we didn't use volume. And I may that corner ripped up right there. I may can get away with that. Let me see. I need a second piece or not. Let's cut. Let's take this off first. Put back on my regular blade. 
Now, the thing about your regular braid in this paper, because it's so thin, this is from Hobby Lobby. And this is the 80 sheets. I'm going to get those like 80 sheets pieces of paper. Oh, they're so thin. So this is going to be five and a half. Like we just talked about. See, because the air right. And then this is... Let's see. I don't know if I can use this or not because this has that rip. I think it's too high. Because it's ten and a half, not ten. Yeah. It's just like ripped right there. I could probably set it away with it because that's the corner. But I won't do that. It's frayed. Let's see, let's do this one. Five and a half. I took a page of this and fussy cut all of those out because I'm making him a Batman album, scrapbook album. To make some embellishments. I hate this paper when it's so thin. I think it should cut crisp because it's so thin, but it doesn't. So I am going to need one more sheet to cut from. And I'm going to use the other blue for that one. I thought that was that rip. Let's see what else we could do. Football. Alright, so we're going to do that instant. I'm going to cut it this way. Five and a half. Again, I know I'm going fast. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I will be more than happy to answer. And this is ten and a half. Boom. Okay. Let's move these scraps out of the way for the moment. Now, because I noticed that this is shredding a little bit, I'm going to tear it with my scissors. And you know, it's not Michael's right across the street, but I just can't run across the street and get what you want because, hey, we all locked down, right? phone ring messed up a video because I'm using my phone at the moment but I already um just take this down now if I had time I would prefer to homage it because I need it to last this is not going to last but it's okay the envelopes will I can always you know, remake the covers at a letter date and the envelopes are reusable now this paper is incredibly thin um and the reason why, like I said, the Marge Project would add a layer of doability to it. Um, and if I have time, which I doubt it, I will add a layer on it and let it dry. At least the front cover. Now, I am just going to take this and pray it lays down evenly. That's the best it's going to get for me. Not bad. Alright, so that's my covers. I just got to figure out which side I want to go. This one I had to pull up and do it over again, but it worked. Then rip. That was amazing. So I think... Um, I don't know if I want both sides out. Oh, bam. Maybe. And see, and then I could lay the book down like this and laminate. I mean, not laminate it, but Mod Podge, and it can dry overnight. Um, which is what I think I'm going to do. Alright, so I am going to grab these. It's going to be thick. Because this is way thicker than mine with my Prima dolls in it. And I'm going to grab my cinch again. And I am going to punch out. push the pin in. So we're going to oh punch. Just over the inside. Punch. 
right now put this all the way out stick my pen in and it's a little off but oops wrong one and i'm going to pull out number eight again stay consistent where i was at Let's see if that worked perfectly all right same thing here push my pen down this is the fastest i swear push my pen down flush release reason why I say it's fast because we are going to spiral it instead of trying to crimp it so that makes it even faster so I'm going to grab a this and you just thread it through so it's going to take a minute probably because some of these are a little slippery but what you want to do is with the first hole which this one starts a little lower down because we made this ten and a half instead of ten but I wanted the holes to match to line up so we're going to start down, right here, because it wouldn't have made sense if we had to have a hole the other way. Oops, I'm sorry. Need to start at the bottom, not the top. Start at the bottom. That's how you do it, and you work your way up. All right. So I'm going to thread everything through the zip bottom, and it's going to be a little bit more tricky because, not hard just a little bit more slippery because I have um, laminated you know what I mean a little slippery Not the right order. I'm just going to stay the right order. And then we want to grab our last cover. Stick it I'm really rushing through this because I really am more meticulous about my covers. Because I know if they're messed up, the rest of it's messed up. So I am going to just thread through. Now the only tricky part about threading is to make sure you have every single page. But it goes through really fast and really easily. Like I said, sometimes they slip down. Just got to make sure we have every page so I periodically check like I'm going to do as soon as this one comes through maybe one more and then I'm going to check okay let me check now because none like getting it threaded up I'm going to open all these envelopes up make it easier looks like so far I have every single one Boom. Yes, so we are on the right path. And actually, this holes, you can see the holes, they line up really easily. So, like I said, this is really fast. It's easy. The crimping is easy, too. It's just sometimes it gets squished. It doesn't always look perfect, um, perfectly round. But since it's a homemade journal, I'm okay with that. Now, this journal also could be made with your, um, your memory keepers planner punch or your happy planner punch with both of which I have so you don't have to do this if you don't have a cinch um, but I do have a lot of cinch not a lot but I have some of this the coils and stuff some of them are bigger so um, you know when I got them I got some on Hobby Lobby on clearance and just grabbed them and they were like really cheap like 75 cents that's the only store around here that sells them. And so I was like, yeah. But you know, sometimes you make bigger notebooks. This lamp is hot. I'm sitting right under it and I had this laminator on. Just cut that thing off too. It's hot outside. My AC need to get back on. So, 
So you just keep twirling. I know it looks like it's like, oh my gosh, but it's really easy. And I just like it because it looks like a finished product. Now, the cinch also has um, wire cutters. And I moved it. But I'm going to use this Dollar Tree one. Okay, boom. So I am finished. I went through the last one. I'm going to take this and just bend it back a little. Actually, I think I just cut it off. I put it too hard. I'm just making a loop. You see that? I just made a loop. Just so it was steady. Now, I'll make sure it looks like. This is Dr. Dare to be creative and I am here doing the intro to this video because apparently part of it is messed up so I'm just redoing the intro and this is to um, me doing a boys laminated um, envelope book so the book is already gone um, so I'm doing the intro because that part when I downloaded it was corrupted so anyway stay tuned for the rest of it so you missed I guess the envelope but I do have another um, video up to show you how to make it just in case you need to so I'll have that linked at the end of the video as well all right so um, the, the video finishes but it just doesn't have the intro 